13 House Democrats have co-sponsored a bill that would bar the federal government from naming any buildings or monuments for former President Donald Trump and would block his burial at Arlington National Cemetery. The No Glory for Hate Act, introduced late last month by Democratic Representative Linda Sanchez of California, also would bar President Trump from receiving a federal pension valued at $220,000 per year, office space, and paid staff. He would still be entitled to Secret Service protection. Trump allies say the proposal is more proof that Democrats are consumed with hatred for President Trump. Republican Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona tweeted on Thursday. President Donald Trump lives rent-free in the heads of Democrats. If it weren't so tragic, it would be hilarious. Ms. Sanchez vowed that President Trump's name should not appear on so much as a park bench. Ms. Sanchez said in a statement, referring to the riot at the United States Capitol. For years, Donald Trump poured gasoline on lies, encouraging racism and hatred, then lit the match on January 6. We should never glorify the hatred Donald Trump personified as president. The bill doesn't mention President Trump by name, but refers to any president who has been impeached twice by the House. Mr. Trump is the only president with that distinction. The bill cites specific examples where President Trump's name would be banned, including military bases, highways and subways under the control of the federal government. Two Republican state legislators in Ohio have proposed creating a state holiday to honor President Trump on June 14. That date is also President Trump's birthday, as well as Flag Day. Ivanka Trump has told Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida that she won't run against him in the GOP primary next year, according to people familiar with the discussion. Ivanka Trump, the eldest child of former President Trump, had the conversation with Mr. Rubio last month. There had been speculation that Ivanka Trump might run for office after leaving the White House, where she served as an advisor to her father. She and husband Jared Kushner and their three children have moved to Miami. Liberal advocacy groups are building a $22 million, Latino anti-disinformation lab, led by Media Matters for America President Angelo Carusoni, Voto Latino President Maria Teresa Kumar, and former Democratic National Committee Chair Tom Perez. Media Matters, Liberals leading media watchdog, and Voto Latino, a liberal voter registration group focused on Hispanic voters, announced the new effort to combat what they perceive as misinformation and disinformation about democracy and public health aimed at Hispanic communities. The groups in an announcement said. The need for this initiative is clear. In the months leading up to the 2020 general election, voters were subject to higher levels of mis- and disinformation than ever before. Spanish and English language voter fraud misinformation, fear-mongering tactics, and disinformation about corona spread throughout the media and on mainstream social platforms like Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, and other online communities. This included a significant increase in false information targeting communities of color, disproportionately impacting Spanish-speaking audiences over the age of 40. The groups say the new lab will expand Media Matters monitoring of Spanish-language media and online platforms to develop research that Voto Latino will use to identify and influence at-risk Latinx voters. Mr. Carusoni said, Whether it's public health, political campaigns, or policy debates, the way the media approaches the issue will greatly influence the outcome. The right-wing sphere has spent years building a misinformation machine to target the Latinx community, which has resulted in a rising tide of disinformation. The liberal push to win over Hispanic voters comes after former President Trump made new inroads with Hispanic communities that previous GOP candidates did not reach. According to NBC News exit polling. In Florida, a state President Trump won despite losing to President Biden, approximately 55% of the Cuban-American vote went to President Trump alongside 30% of Puerto Rican voters and 48% of other Latinos. Hispanic voters that tilted toward President Trump also helped Republicans make gains in the United States House of Representatives, including by flipping seats in South Florida. As a former Democratic Party boss, Mr. Perez recognized the threat his candidates face because of the political right's new traction with Hispanic voters. Mr. Perez in a statement said. 
Misinformation targeting the Latino community is a very real and growing threat. We've got to address this threat head on with a substantial, focused, and concerted effort. This is the kind of lasting investment in communications infrastructure within the Latino community that is necessary to respond to the threat of misinformation as well as harness durable political and civic power.